Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Unboxing and Stuff. Today we are going to be taking a look at another Bell Phone radio, the BF7110, which is an analog only UHF radio. So let's go ahead and get into the box. We're going to take a look at the radio and it's how it's set up. Uh, we're then going to test out the power. Then we're going to go ahead and overview all the programming software and then test it out in the field and then come back for some final thoughts. So go ahead and stick around and you guys can find out what we think of this radio here at the Unboxing and Stuff channel. Okay, let's go ahead and get the radio out of the box. So in this radio, it comes with a 2200 milliamp hour battery. It comes with the BF7110 radio itself. comes with a charging dock and just like the last two radios we looked at comes with an AC adapter this one happened to be European so I got an adapter so I can plug into the US uh, if you're gonna bring these into the US and sell them at all uh, they'd be able to put in whatever adapter you wanted comes with an interesting antenna compared to the last two we looked at so 400 and 470, 2470 megahertz. But this one is extendable, which is unique to this radio. It also comes with a belt clip and a lanyard. And then they also sent a computer programming cable, which this is the Kenwood style uh, two pin on the side connector programming cable. So additional accessories you can get for this is a an earpiece and a speaker microphone as well. Uh, I assume pretty much any speaker mic style, Kenwood style side connector accessories would probably work on this radio. So let's go ahead and put this thing together real quick. So that battery just goes on bottom and slides up, clicks into place. The clip here just slides in from the top and then clicks into place. Um, the, I'm not a huge fan of the ones that mount to the battery just because when you change the battery, if you only had the one belt clip, you'd have to swap that over to the other one if you wanted to utilize that. Uh, but if you had, if you bought a couple of these, you know, that's a workaround for something like that. Then we go ahead and screw on our antenna here. And the radio is physically all set to go. So let's go ahead and discuss the specs and capabilities really quick. The frequency range on this radio, uh, it's only available in actually one band, which is UHF, and it is 400 to 470 megahertz. This is a single zone radio, and it only has 16 channels. It is narrow and wideband capable. The power output is seven watts on high power and one watt on low power, though I will point out that the radio itself has eight watt output sticker on it. This radio transmits in FM analog only. It has busy channel lockout. When it is activated, this feature prevents the radio from receiving unauthorized signals or transmitting signals to busy channels. So channels can be kept from unnecessary interference. Okay, so we're gonna go over the uh, layout on this radio. So we have our power and volume knob. We have our 16 channel channel selector knob. We have our LED indicator. We have our push to talk button. We have our monitor key and our scan key. And then over on this side, as you saw earlier, we have our mic and speaker uh, slash programming input. And so that is how simple this radio is. This is a very simple radio. So let's go ahead and get this radio set up on the watt meter and we'll go ahead and test 
out the radio and see how it does. Okay, here we are set up on our watt meter and just like our other videos, I'll give the disclaimer. This is all Amazon acquired testing equipment and may not be perfectly accurate. This meter goes up to 200 watts, so I don't know how accurate it is on the bottom of the scale. Uh, the 100 watt dummy load is off of Amazon. The adapters are all off of Amazon. These jumper cables, Amazon. So I can't say that this is a perfect scientific test, but it will give us data and we can look at it and think about what we will. So for our first test, we are on the 446 on high power and we're going to go ahead and transmit. And there you see approximately four watts on high power. Two. Channel two is the 446 on low power. Approximately a quarter watt. Three. Three is 400 megahertz on high power. And keep in mind, it's going into a demo load. It's not going out into the world. So 7.8 watts there. Four is low power at the 400 megahertz range, and that's 0.62. Five. Five. Five watts, and that's at the upper end of the band at 470. Six. Six. 0.3 watts, and that's the upper end of the band on low power at 470. So there you go. There's our readings. Take it with a grain of salt. Think of it what you will. Uh, but that covers this portion. So let's go ahead and take a look at the programming software and then we're going to actually get out in the field and do some testing. Okay, here we are taking a look at the software for the 7110. Uh, as you'll notice, this is a very simple software. There's not really too much going on here. Uh, you can see your model here. BF7110, and uh, you can edit. There are some optional features here. Squelch level, Vox, voice prompts, transmit, timeout timer, and transmit tone. <clears throat> Beginning of transmission, end of transmission, or both. So we have our receive and transmit frequencies. We have our PL tones, both analog and digital just in a nice long list, so you can select from there. Then we have scan add, transmit power high and low, bandwidth wide and narrow, and BCL, which is busy channel lockout. So you can have it none uh, if there's open carrier or uh, a PL tone of some kind. And then if we go here, set this to a digital, then you can see here normal signal or special signal are your options as well. So that's it. This is pretty clear cut and straightforward. There's only one zone, so there's not too much to get lost in uh, when you're working on this guy here. So that is the 7110 programming software. Like I said, straightforward, simple to use. Uh, at this point, we're going to go ahead and move on to field testing, and then we'll do some closing thoughts after that. Okay, here we are. Got the garage open, and we're going to be doing some testing. I have a friend out in the field, and he's approximately three and a quarter miles away. So we're going to go ahead and uh, just do some radio checks back and forth on analog and digital. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and edit out our call signs for privacy reasons. Uh, but just note that they are being used. You're just not going to see it in the video. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and test out the BF7110 three and a quarter mile range test. And we'll go ahead and extend the antenna and give it a shot. Okay, audio testing one, two, three, three, two, one. How do you copy? Okay, audio testing one, two, three. Three, two, one. How do you copy? I copy your transmission. Great. 
Um, let me know how I'm sounding here on your end. Audio testing. One, two, three. Three, two, one. I uh, copy your transmission. Great. Um, let me know how I'm sounding here on your end. Audio testing. One, two, three. Three, two, one. Uh, audio is nice and clear, definitely a little static and noise in the background, but I can definitely understand and read the transmission. So uh, thanks for the audio test and we'll move on. Okay, and here we are back from our audio test at the three and a quarter mile range. And as you can see, this uh, radio performed totally adequately, uh, similar to the other two radios we tested as well. Uh, and, and it works. Unfortunately, I didn't have this radio with me when I did the uh, hilltop test. However, all other conditions being the same, I assume this radio would have done just fine at the 34 and a half miles clear line of sight test that we did. Uh, in the future, I'll try and uh, not leave any radios behind if I can go do something like that. Um, but this radio is not uh, IP68 or 67 waterproof, so we will not be dunking it in a uh, cup of water for our last test here while we talk about the radio. Um, but let's go ahead and go over uh, some final thoughts and kind of what I think about the radio. Um, the fit and finish is definitely not quite as nice as the other two, but it definitely feels better in the hand and higher quality than uh, say a, a bow thing or something like that. Uh, it's, it's definitely a step or two above that for sure, um, but not quite as nice as the other ones as far as fit and finish goes. All the buttons feel pretty darn good. You got nice positive clicks. Um, the uh, knob up top works fairly well. There's some of the uh, numbered 16 channel settings that if you're going real slow, it doesn't quite feel like it's positive, like it's getting there, uh, but it it does and it works fine. Uh, so some of them just feel a little bit more positive than the other, the actual little click that indents you feel. But uh, the sound quality seems really good on this radio. Uh, the programming, right? There's no front panel on this or screen, so we do it all on the computer. Extremely simple, and if you're looking for a radio capable of 16 channels in UHF frequencies, then this is definitely not a bad option. Uh, it's you know a fairly inexpensive radio, so if you had to get several of them for a business or something like that, not a big deal. Um, programming, like I said, super simple, and as you guys saw uh, earlier in the video, uh, so I like that. If you had a radio you wanted to program for someone to use and not have them have the ability to change anything or do any programming themselves without, you know, a computer and the software, then I think this is a pretty good option for that. Uh, you know, it's going to keep people from playing with settings that they shouldn't play with or don't understand. Um, and the relative inexpensive cost makes it nice for business in case you lose or break or something like that, one of these. Not the end of the world, just buy another one. Um, but overall, I mean, it seems like a decent radio. I think that if this is something in the needs department that ticked all your boxes uh, and you wanted a low cost, then th this is pretty solid. So uh, I really think that's all I got to say about this. There's no programming buttons that you can change on the side. They all just have specific functions which on this particular style of radio makes sense because there's not a lot of extra stuff that it could do. I mean, there's there's only so many things you could do on an analog only radio with 16 channels and no extra zones. So, um, so I think on this radio, it's acceptable, it's adequate. Uh, the antenna is kind of fun, how it extends up. Uh, I'm not sure how much better or worse this makes uh, range or diff at different distances and different environments. Um, but it's kind of cool. It's kind of fun. So, uh, I think that pretty much wraps up all my thoughts on this particular radio. Um, if you guys are interested in any of the, uh, watt meter or dummy load cables, adapters, my little power pole breakout there, any of that stuff, I'll have links for that to Amazon below. You guys can go check out, check out that stuff if you're interested. And I'll have the link to the Bellphone, uh, 7110 page. Uh, on their website if you wanted to inquire with them 
any more information about this radio. Uh, and while you're there, you can check out all their other stuff. because They do have a rather large selection of uh, radio equipment. So uh, <clears throat> go ahead and check them out on there. And uh, I will throw this video into my Bell Phone playlist where there's going to be multiple uh, videos of the different radios that you guys can check out uh, along the way. As we get more and more videos in there, there will be more and more content for you to look at, which is kind of cool. So I think that about wraps it up for this video. Uh, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. If you stuck around this long, go ahead and like the video if you liked it. Uh, leave a comment below if you have any questions or anything you'd like to point out about the radio, maybe something I missed, uh, and we can talk about that there. And then go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you want to support the channel. Uh, just let me know that you like to see what I'm putting out and uh, give me a little motivation to continue uh, on this path. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video on the 7110, and we will catch you on the next one.